as we today turn to the word of god i wanted to mention what is the greatest need of canada what is the greatest need of america what is the greatest need of the western countries what is the greatest need of the whole world and what is the greatest need of a christian may i bring that to your attention what is this present moment what is the greatest need unless we realize the greatest need we may not attend to it so may i ask you that have you thought what is the greatest need of the hour of course we have so many needs but out of the mall what is the great what is the cry of god what is the in other words what is the best thing that, that can happen to you have you ever thought about it what is, as a christian what is the best thing that god can do for you in other words what is the worst thing the devil can do against you have you thought about it what is the best thing that god can do today for you and what is the worst thing that the devil can do against you and what is the greatest need of the hour please listen i do not know how many of you will agree with me but as you listen to the word of god i believe god will speak to your heart now the greatest need listen young people listen the greatest need of the hour is people with a pure mind the greatest need of the hour god needs at least one person with a pure mind who can challenge the devil against all filthiness and fight all sinful thoughts and overcome only one person will make a stand for god as we you might have heard one person with god is a majority i know perhaps it is possible some of you young people will not listen to this word because minds are so corrupted what is the worst thing that the devil can do you know there are so many demons and out of them all devil is called or satan is called the chief of all of them so many demons are doing so many wicked things but it what is satan's work you know main work you know there are so many demons of slumbering demons or sickening demons and there are demons of anger and jealousy and so many things listen dear child of god satan's work main work what does the bible say that is what so many people already the devil has already done that but today i want to tell you there is a way out you can come out of the corrupt mind god needs a group of people this corrupt world can only be overcome conquered by saints those who have holy incorruptible uncorruptible pure mind there is a generation that is pure in their own sight but are not washed from their filthiness what is the worst thing that devil can do against you listen from the word of god in first corinthians um, sorry um, second corinthians chapter 11 that we read there yeah, somebody may please take the microphone and read it for me help me by reading some more verses are to please read verse 3 but i fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ the worst thing that the devil can do perhaps some young people may not understand this or may not recognize it or realize it today please open your heart the mind for the god's word it can really help your life i want to tell you all young people i was a young person like you as a teenager that was in 1959 the lord came to my heart and i realized the 
difference. I cannot say now I am a perfect holy saint. No, I am far short of it. But one thing God helped me to realize. The greatest thing that you can, that God can do in your life is to give you a pure mind. How many of you believe that? The greatest thing that God can do for you and for me is to give a pure mind. Those who believe that, will you shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Shall we shout hallelujah again? Shall we shout hallelujah again? Why that is needed to be a child of God? I know some young people, they, their mind so corrupt, they cannot attend on the word of God. Today, I invite your attention and I arrest your mind to bring to the foot of the cross to hear the word of God. Why you need a pure mind? Because mind is the capital of a man. If you they take this whole being, whole body, right from head to foot, you need eyes, you need tongue, you need everything. But mind is like a capital. When the capital, if although America seems to be a great nation, but when watch, if you want to conquer the whole America, first you conquer Washington D.C. That is the place of the White House. That is the place of so many military targets and so many things. All the all various important things are stationed there. Main decisions are made from there. So, when your mind is corrupt, you are corrupt. They, I want to tell you, there is a way the blood of Jesus Christ can release you out of the pit of hell and bring purity to mind. I want you to believe. Today, the worst thing that uh, the devil can do against a child of God is, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Yes, you may say, my mind is so corrupt. Even in the meeting time, what is going on in the mind? God is watching that. Once your mind has been captured by the devil, you are practically captured. You are sitting like a robot in the meeting hall, but may not be able to enjoy and experience and, uh, and glorify God. But I want to tell you, there is a way you can come out of that uh, horrible pit and the miry clay about that we sang about. Why mind needs to be pure? Perhaps uh, you may not realize why it is needed. I want to share from the word of God. Why mind needs to be pure. Perhaps we are come to is a generation where people just cannot believe holiness is possible. The filth that is coming out the television. Sometimes even the internet also. You can we are not careful. Access to so many filthy things. In computer and uh, videos and there are so many things. One purpose of the devil is to corrupt the mind of the young people. Because once mind is corrupted, no word of God will go into the spirit. Please listen carefully. There is something very important why mind needs to be pure. Why God wants your mind and my minds need to be pure. Before I go to that, listen, there are three plans about every human being. Whether you are a Christian, whether you are a non-Christian, does not matter. If you are born to this earth, there are three plans about your life. One is, devil got a plan about you. What is the devil's plan for you? Take John's Gospel, chapter 10, and we read verse Please read verse 10. Ah, so the thief, devil is called the thief. His plan is that it to steal, steal your peace, steal your um, health, steal your joy, steal all the good things and to kill and to destroy. That is the devil's plan. Devil wanted to destroy you. That is his plan. But if you give room for that, just before starting of the meeting, one elderly mother came to me and told about her, how she concerned about her 
her close relative, that boy, 18-year-old boy, he says, Pastor, he comes home after 1 o'clock or 1.30. And he says to the mom that I am 18 and I am free. What is the freedom? Do you know what is the meaning of freedom? The real meaning of freedom means, listen, free, the right meaning of freedom, freedom means freedom to do the right thing. That is the true freedom. You ask a smoking, a drinking boy, are you free out of that, uh, out of smoking? They may say, I am free to drink. Are you free from drink? Even if the doctors will say, your heart is now really you know, about to blow and your lungs because of smoking is already cancer there. Can you stop smoking or drinking? I can't. That means you are bound, isn't it? That is not freedom. Freedom is the right to do the right thing. The power to do the right thing. Many do not have that freedom. Ask a young man whether he can live without television one week. No. Then what is, is it freedom? No, they are one, I read a um, fact uh, some time ago. I, I, I don't know whether you have read that. A man who sits before television, he has broken all the Ten Commandments. And very clearly, categorically, he writes that. And I say, Amen to that. If you want to be a holy man, I tell you, television will never help you to be holy. How many of you can say Amen to that? How many young people can say Amen to that? If you want to live a holy life, television is not meant for you. Get rid of it. Be zealous for God. That is not freedom. People are, that's why people are hooked to it. The thief, one plan is the devil has the plan. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Destroy your mind. Destroy your future. Destroy your sleep. Destroy anything that is good in your life. That is devil's plan. And you may have your own plan also. That is the second one. But what will happen to your plan? Please read about that. Human Plans, chapter Proverbs, chapter 16. Here, we find what will happen. Verse 25. 1625. 1625. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. A way, if you ought to have a girlfriend... To have a boyfriend, oh, who he can enjoy life. Look at millions of people who went to the pit of immorality and lost their mind. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But listen, the end thereof are the ways of death. Some young people are already running towards the ways of death. It is like a, a man standing on a steep hill. When you take the first step itself, after stay, taking the first step, you cannot stop. Because it is so, sin is so steep, violently running dry down. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways, not way. First it is starting with way, way. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Quite a number of people, they want to go in their own way. I tell you, I am the way, the truth and the life. What the word of God says, that is the right way. All other ways. It may appear, beginning it may appear good, but then there are the ways of death. And let me come, God has got a plan for you. We heard about devil has got a plan that to steal and to kill and to destroy. You may have your own plan and your plans may appear very good in the beginning. But the end there are the ways of death. And then there is another way, another plan. 
God has got a plan. What is God's plan for you? It is very exciting. Please read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of, my, heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Praise be to God. This is God's plan for us. Today I invite you to this plan. But I want to, as simple as possible, I would like to explain how can we come into this plan. Today, being the last day of the convention, we must come to this God's plan. What is God's plan for you? As it is written, I have not seen, nor ye heard, nor neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. It, listen here, not planned for them, but prepared already. The devil is planning so many things, you may be planning so many things, but when it comes to God's plan, God's plan is already prepared. How beautiful it is. I has not seen, nor heard, nor entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And now how do you know that? This is the important thing. You must listen, dear child of God. How to know? Yes, it is written here, God's plan is so great. But how do I know God's plan? So many people come and ask, I want to know what is God's plan for me. Simply just asking the servant of God is not enough. There is a way that you can know God's plan. God's plan is so exciting, isn't it? Isn't it? I has not seen how beautiful. Whatever your eyes have seen, beautiful things, this God's plan for you is more beautiful than that. Neither have entered into the heart of man, nor uh, ear heard. You might have heard about so many, you know, stories fables and fairest, uh, you know, uh, stories. But God's plan for you and me is greater, better, more magnificent than any of these things. Then how do I know? This is what, where you need to give attention. In the New Testament time, in the Old Testament time, God wrote down on the stone, Tables of stone, God wrote down all the Ten Commandments and various other statutes and laws and all. But in the New Testament time, you know what God does? He does not write on the tables of stone. His plan, what God has prepared for you, He wants to write in a new place. Where does He write that? Please read Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 10 and 11. This is why we need a pure mind. Please read. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. This is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, yes. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to be a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me. Praise be to God. To the Thank you. That's nice. So we find, I will put my laws into their mind. Yes. God's plan, if you want to know God's plan, it is going to be written in the mind. So you and I need a pure mind. When we were born, our minds were purer, cleaner than this sheet of paper. Every time sinful thoughts, evil thoughts, carnal thoughts, dustful thoughts come, it becomes black spot, black spot. In the simplest way I want to explain. And finally, the mind may be darker, blacker than this. And then, even if I write down, God loves you, I cannot, I, I myself cannot read it. Because all full of black spots there. This is what many people are struggling about. 
they do not i want to know the mind of god i want to know god's plan about me yeah, god's plan is so great but how do i know he wants to write on the table of our mind he cannot write in a dead dirty paper god is so holy he needs a pure clean paper that is what the blood of jesus christ can do whitest thing in the world is snow but the blood of jesus christ has power to wash us and make our mind whiter than snow and be a child of god when our minds become pure clean then god starts my child this is my plan for you and every day christian life will become exciting and joyful and glorious and very blessed life but if you do not know this the devil knows that that's why the devil wants to corrupt your mind but there is power in the precious blood of christ as you really turn to god and repent today there are three plans for your life they will got a plan you may have your own plan and god has a fighting plan how many of you really want the god's plan to be fulfilled in your life if you want the in your life the plan of god to be fulfilled today he is ready to fight with his pen of god's plan and he is waiting for a pure a clean sheet of paper he wants a clean sheet of paper those who give a clean sheet of paper if you surrender your life lord i want to be a holy man the real hero listen the real hero in spiritual life is the one who has captivated every thought to the obedience of christ that is what the word of god does the preaching of holiness excite you or is it boring for you i tell you the most exciting thing that god can do the most blessed thing that god can do the greatest thing that god can do for you and for me is to give a pure mind and holy people are happy have you noticed holy people end this glory and holy people end this so in glory look at job god himself gave a testimony there is no one like him who is cured the departs from evil and a pray before me and we read about job then in james we read in the james epistle the job's end was like the end of god end of the lord means job's end was like the lord's end and look at samson he was called he was chosen he was filled with the holy spirit only one problem he had weakness for women that's all that is the only problem he had weakness for women all of us mighty he was called by god even the name was given by the angel of god god appeared to manoah and the wife you are going to have a child and them he will be nazarite and oh what a great and glorious calling he had he was a mighty man when the anointing coming upon him oh you are to see even a lion was like a small kid he was able to bear but only for one problem he had just weakness for women does this speak to any samson here look at the end of samson he committed suicide and the other thoughts of it see the pattern listen holy people's end will be happy end. and unholy people's end will be very happy today god is challenging you what way you want to end your life do you want to die like a dog then you continue to live like a dog but today god is calling you back there is a way of holiness and that way is called the way highway of holiness how many people really want to be a hero for god paul says the weapons of warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ young man young woman do you believe that by the power of god you can live a holy life if you don't believe you don't have backbone today god is speaking to you 
Do you want God's plan to be fulfilled in your life? There is only one way. God's plan, if you want to know, He will write His law in the heart and in the mind. Unless your heart, your mind is clean, you will not know. Yes, you will not know God's plan. Yes, it is true. Word of God says God's plan is so exciting, so glorious. But you cannot read it in any Bible college there, any books you cannot read that. He will personally will write on your mind and then you will be an exciting person, excited person. You will be a happy person. Blessed are the pure in heart or oh, happy are the pure in heart. Do you want that happiness? That is the only happiness lasting happiness. All other happiness will be short-lived. Do you want to be a holy man? Today God is speaking to you. His word has power. His blood has power. His spirit has power. And all what you need, surrender to Him. The worst thing to happen already happened to some people. Their minds have been so corrupt to the core. They just some boys can only all the time think about girls only and vice versa. Oh, you may be sitting here. You are a miserable creature. I want to tell you, if you mess up your life in young life, when you are old, you will regret. And it will be too late for you. You have no, you will not have any word to give to the young people because you will be condemned. I'm telling after knowing the Lord, failing away, come back to God. And there you can be a hero of, for Christ. Paul says, I fought a good fight. He might have fought against evil thoughts also. And how many really want to fight the good fight of faith to conquer all the evil sinful thoughts? Today God is speaking to you. There is a spiritual life called flowing with milk and honey. Holy life is a canon. Flowing with milk and honey. Holy people are happy people. Your happiness with money and materials and health and wealth all will be short lived. God is looking for holy people whose mind, whose thoughts have been conquered by the power of God's grace. And now, yesterday we heard about agape, that heavenly love, that, that love. Oh, we read in the word of God. Holy love. It's holiness and love that agape both are connected together. Remember, dear child of God, today being the last day, you should not go as you came with a filthy mind. There is power in the precious blood of Jesus. As your heart will cry out, Lord, my capital has been captured by the devil. Today, I want to conquer that by the power of God. Holy Spirit is given for that. If you don't live a holy life, I want to tell you, God's plan has been really broken, destroyed in your life. God's plan can only be fulfilled in them, those who have got a clean mind. Why do you watch this program and that program and watch, uh, look at this type of magazine and that type of magazine? Because the filthy mind wants to feed on those things. What is the difference between pigs and lambs? Lambs, although they may fall into a pit, it will be struggling to get out of that pit. Till they get out of the pit, the lambs will be struggling. But the pig, once fall into the pit, they enjoy remaining there. Some, sad to say, have come to the state of pigs. Forgive me for using that word. Some seem to be enjoying the film. Today, Jesus wants to change you. He can change you. Your life can really become useful. Vessels made for the master's use. I tell you, a filthy, with a filthy heart, you don't enjoy the world. You don't enjoy God. You don't enjoy heaven. You don't enjoy anything in the real way. Holy people are truly happy people. But you must be willing to fight the good fight of faith. Lord, I must get out of this. 
I must get out of this pit. I am in the miry clay. I am in the in the pit of all the filth. I want to come out of it. Why should all the time I think about boys or girls or this or that or a carnal thing? Lord, I must get out of it. Yes, there is wonderful power in the precious blood of Jesus. You can be holy in your conscience. You can be holy in your thoughts. You can be holy in your words. You can be holy in your deeds. You can be holy in your attitude, your relationships. You can be holy in your imaginations. You can be holy in your dreams. Because there is power in the blood of Jesus. Oh, all heaven is crying. Holy, holy, holy, the Lord God Almighty. Angels, their conversation is holy, holy, holy. Oh dear child of God, after coming to the convention, if the holiness of God does not attract you, I don't think you have gained much. Today, you can really can come to the Lord to receive His purity. Purity is heaven's character. And when that comes to our life, it really becomes heaven. Don't think that when you become 70 or 80 or 90, you can be holy. No. You, your body may be 70 or 80 or 90 years old, but your mind can be still 17 and or 18 year old. Boy or girl's mind. Mind does not grow according to the age. Mind will be according to how you exercise your mind. It is the body that grows to 70 or 80 or 90. So grace does not come by age. It comes by grace. Oh, holiness does not come by age, but by grace. But those who got a glimpse of the glory of holiness, I tell you, they are blessed people. If this message does not shake you up, oh, unto you. Not that again I tell you that I am preaching a tremendous message. I want to tell you, holiness is the theme of heaven's life. Their angels sing, holy, holy, holy, the Lord God Almighty. And we read, as in Isaiah chapter 6, we read, when they were uh, crying, holy, holy, what happened? Please read chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6. Please read from verse, uh, from second verse. About it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved, and the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Oh, when they cried, holy, holy, even the pillars were shaking. Praise be to God. The pillars, the posts were moved by that. I want to tell you, dear children of God, holiness, the theme, the a life of holiness is so vibrant, is so glorious, it is so powerful, it can shake any unshakable thing. And all hell will be trembling when I say the child of God lives a holy life. Have you ever decided to live a holy life? Do you have any time in your heart ever a desire come? Lord, I want to be holy. If that comes, why is that I am giving that emphasis or the Holy Spirit is giving emphasis? God's plan can never be fulfilled in your life unless mind is pure and clean. Why? In the New Testament, God writes his law in the mind and in the heart. Holy people only will have a happy end. Others will have a miserable end. Unhappy end. Look at her, Jezebel. How filthy she was. Look at the way she ended her life. Today, God's calling upon your life is for holiness unto the Lord. Every walk of life, thoughts, words, dreams, imaginations, everything, God has power to make them holy. Be clean unto the Lord. And particularly I want to tell you young people, yes, we can live a holy life. 
I was young like you once. I cannot boast. I lived a perfect holy life. But by the grace of God, God kept me all the way through from the time I was born again. I wish I lived a, a better holy life. I regret about it. I could have lived a, a higher life than what I lived. But by the grace of God, I can say, God preserved my life. And God who has done graciously for me, he can do it for me. When I look back by the grace of God, I am happy. My young life, thank God, I, by the grace of God, God didn't let me mess it up, I can say that, that much. And it is a joyful life. And when we live this life, be a children of God, then it is like some scales going out of your mind. And God's grace can flow through this Importantly, what I wanted to mention is that the first judgment came on earth. Listen, the first judgment came upon earth after the six days of creation because the thoughts were evil. Why I want to mention that? If you don't live a holy life, it is possible already the judgment of God may be upon you. Please read Genesis chapter 6. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And every imagination of the thoughts of the heart, evil continually. Then we read about it. God decided to send the judgment of blood. Some of you, I want to tell you, it is possible some of you are facing some judgment of God. I do not know what it is. The reason could be the thoughts of the imaginations are continually evil and God sends judgment. Listen here. That time, in the times of Noah, Holy Spirit was not given to the people. Church was not established. There was no Bible. There was no pastor. There was no priest. There was no preacher. That time, when the thoughts were evil, God's judgment came. Today, how much more? After receiving all these blessed truths, if we live an unclean life, what a terrible judgment. Today, well, I am preaching this. Today, God will be pleased to stop that judgment. I hope, if you repent, and then, Lord, this is the judgment of God. Perhaps this sickness is the judgment of God. This great problem that I am facing in my family, in my life, is the judgment of God. Repent and turn to God. Today, it is possible God may stop that judgment. I want to tell you, holy, those who live a holy life, they will understand the deep things of God. Otherwise, you will be like in a shallow waters. You don't understand. What is this sermon being preached? Oh, can't understand anything. Yes. If we need to understand, our mind should be pure and clean. God wants to write that, uh, which cannot be erased at all. Today, the power of the blood of Jesus the power of the word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is available to cleanse and wash and to make us pure and clean. Oh, what a blessed and glorious life that is. Young man, can you hear what God is speaking to you today? Why should you be miserable and unhappy? Why you plug into that television and that particular type of video and this and that? Why don't you turn to God? People find life is so boring without television. Why? There is something better, sweeter. In His presence there is fullness of joy. In His right hand there are pleasures evermore. But when you are not able to live in the presence of God, something else, you need to live it. But that is not going to help you. You might have heard some time ago, I might have mentioned here or elsewhere, about the gutter water. One man of God 
says that God is able to save us from the gutter most to the uttermost. You may be right down deep in the gutter, foul smelling filthy, but God can change you. He has power. You might have heard about the story once that uh, in the gutter there was a dirty drop of water, so filthy, emanating so much of foul smell, and hardly anybody can look at it. It was so dark, filthy. And one early morning, that dirty drop of water, when it looked it so right on the top of the mountain, a dew drop just fell fresh, so pure, so clean. And when the sunshine came, it became in brilliant uh, colors. It was shiny, that little dew drop on top of the mountain. The gutter, the story says that gutter water thought, Oh God, look at me. Here I am deep down in the gutter. So foul, smelling, dark, filthy. And look at that dew drop. So pure, so clean. And the sunshine in million colors. It's really uh, so bright. Can I ever become like that dew drop? Then the story says that very sunshine that was upon the mountain, also it came shining in the gutter too. And slowly that gutter drop of water was evaporated and it became vapor and went right up. And next morning it came as a dew drop on the mountain top. That story. Even naturally, we know that happens. What I want to challenge you, today you may be the gutter water. Absolutely so filthy. Your mind is so unclean. Unclean thoughts, unclean dreams, unclean imaginations, unclean feelings. I tell you, there is hope for you in Jesus. If God can, the sunshine of this world can evaporate and transform this gutter water, and next morning it can come and cool down and come as a dew drop. If the sun of, the, the, of this world can do that, sun of righteousness, Jesus can really change you. There is hope for you. You don't need to live, but this is the way you are living. But you must be desperate. Do you want the plan of God to be fulfilled? There is only one way. The plan of God can only be written. In the mind, nowhere else. And if the mind, if today you will give, before this meeting is, this, uh, this service is finished, God can do it in one, one second. As you surrender. You will see the difference. You will feel the difference. Oh, holy life. What a joyful life. Have you ever enjoyed holiness in your life? Have you ever tasted how sweet, sweeter than honey it is? Today, why don't you give a chance for the Lord? Lord, I come to you. As I told earlier, the worst thing that the devil can do against you is to corrupt your mind. And the best thing that God can do for you is to give it to your heart. As King David prayed, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Yes, when a clean heart is there, right spirit will be there. Otherwise, when there is no clean heart, you will have a wrong spirit, wrong attitude. You get upset. You get irritated. You get angry. You get so incensed. You become so jealous and vengeful. I tell you, there is a way out of all these things. That is the way of holiness. Will you today that is Christ-like purity. He that has hope in him purifies himself as he is pure. Why do we need a pure heart, a pure mind? Not only to know the mind of God, but the plan of God to be fulfilled in our life. It is so glorious. If you can please listen. I would like to share something beautiful from some things. 
one passed away three years before he died in 1987. Three years before he died, he told me, from me, I have a weight in mind. This is what he told as far as I remember. I think I have a weight in mind. And my bridegroom is really is enjoying my, my love and presence. And I am enjoying in my bridegroom. It really touched my heart. When he told him, he didn't say, I have a pure mind, I have a virgin mind. How boldly a man ought to say, he has such a pure mind, and that touched him. And he told, when I die, the Lord will shake hand with me and say, well done, Ernest. If you want, you listen to the tape. It is recorded. I listened to so many times that tape. Well done, Ernest. And continue your ministry in Zion. And he told, this corruptible shall put on incorruption, etc. And next, next day, evening, he called all the elders for prayer. And praised God. And then he just slipped into glory. Beautiful, glorious day. A saint who had a virgin mind. He finished his ministry and triumphantly. He, in a way, he preached his own funeral sermon that day. And how his God is going to give him. There's much more to add to that. He also told, when I go to heaven... The Lord will reward me with so many precious rewards. What a bold way that man ended. And after some time, one saint had a vision. He went to heaven in that vision or in a trance. He was shown so many glorious places. And finally brought to a place where it was such a brilliant glory there. For saints. And then the Lord told that to that saying, I will take you to another place, more glorious than this. Then a, on a door, on the door, there it is mentioned, those who suffer with him will reign with him. And when the door was open, he saw so many saints who suffered for the Lord, bright, glorious, shining like a million sun, suns are shining brightly together. And you know then what the Lord told I will take you to another place brighter than this. He hardly could believe there can be any place brighter than this. And then when he was taken, a door was seen. Those who have pure thoughts only will enter there, here. And that appeared to be the highest place. And the door was open. Lo and behold, Pastor Esmeralda stone, a big throne, was waving the hands and smiling, sitting there. And there were so many empty chairs there, or rather thrones there. Angels of God were studying with jasper and precious stones. Obviously, there are saints going to inherit those thrones, empty thrones. I want to tell you, out of them, one is for you. I want to tell you, out of them, one is for you. Today, will you hear the word of God? And come back from all this filthiness. I want to tell you. Over 100 years ago, when Queen Victoria in Britain, when she called, told the British people, go and conquer all of Africa. Hearing that call, British people, young men, risking malaria and wild beasts, killing, risking all of them. Those young people went and conquered almost all African countries. And some of them died in, with malaria and wild beasts had eaten them. But when Queen Victoria challenged them to go and conquer, so many young people came out to do that. Today the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is calling. How many of you are able to go and fight and conquer? Thoughts. How many people will venture to do that? Look at in Sri Lanka, Congo, Sierra Leone. So many teenagers are simply dying for nothing. 
they are fighting. Why don't you fight for the kingdom of God? Why don't you fight and conquer evil thoughts and be a hero for Christ? If this world has corrupt, world has to be changed. It is not through the preachers. Listen, those who conquer their thoughts and live a pure life, through them only, this corrupt world is going to be conquered for Christ. How many of you can say, Amen to that? Amen. Today, the king of kings is challenging you. What are you doing in that remote corner, young man, young girl? You got a precious life before you. A throne is waiting. A crown is waiting. And this is a greater than Queen Victoria calling you. Come on. Rise up and fight for holiness. God needs a group of people. If these young people in all over these countries are simply, they are called soldiers or rebels or whatever they are called, for trivial things they are just dying. And even funeral, many of them, they are dead, in a mass grave they are thrown into. What a shameful way they die for little things, the trivial things of the world. But they are willing to fight. How many Christians are there to fight for this noble cause? And to say, and finally, will you be able to say, I fought a good fight and kept the faith. And henceforth there is laid up for me. A crown of righteousness. Young man, do you believe you can live a holy life by the grace of God? In thoughts, in words, in imaginations, in feelings, in dreams, in attitudes. Oh, holy, holy, holy, the Lord God Almighty. All heaven is singing about the holiness of God. Don't you want to sing that beautiful song of Zion? God is separating a group of people who can live a holy life, the best life, the highest life, the greatest life, uh, the greatest thing to happen in your life and in my life is to have a pure mind. Any price to pay for this, dear child of God, it is worth. It is worth the shedding of blood for this blessed truth. Be ye holy as I am holy. Oh, he that hath this hope will purify himself as he is pure. Why? I am preaching this today. Jesus is coming very soon. His glory is appearing. For His glory, His holy bride, any moment, perhaps while I am preaching this sermon, Jesus may come. I want to tell you, yes, by the power of God, by the grace of God, truly we can live a holy life. And real wise men, if you really want to be a true wise man, holy people are wise. I want to fairly soon finish this sermon, but I want to tell some truths which should go deep, right deep into your spirit. Will you listen? The last revival is the revival of the holiness of God. There are so many Holy rollers, holy laugh, laughers, laughing. And there are so many other... Very, I heard about a, so one sister. She had a spirit. She kept all making her to laugh. And when she was delivered, she told... She went to a particular church where all people were just laughing. That evil spirit came upon her. And there are so many other types of evil spirits. That's why we don't encourage every, you to go to so many other churches. Not we are despising other churches. I want to tell you in 1959, when I received the Holy Spirit, I asked the Lord, Lord, which church I should go to? I didn't like the Pentecostal church, the shouting and the noise. Of course, that time, uh, the church was in a faraway place. But the Lord very clearly showed this little fellowship. That was far away from my village. Far away 14 miles means that. In our village, it's far away. You catch two buses and it may take... Uh, uh, quite a long time to reach there. The Lord showed this small group of people that time. These are the people that I appointed for you. If you want to live a holy life, you go there and I will keep you. That was 39 years ago. Raising the Bible, let me tell you, a thought never came to leave this fellowship or church. So many problems came. I was put out of the house. Various other things came. Where can I go? Dear child of God, I am here because God called. And this fellowship, 
We don't have great singers and preachers and Bible college. But one thing I tell you, the word of God says, except a man forsake all, he cannot be my disciple. To be a servant of God. Don't think BD and DD and PhD, that will make you to be a servant of God. To be a servant of God, unless you forsake all, he cannot be my servant. And the Bible says, servant of God should not have any salary. Of course, in the Bible, there is a person called Micah. He had a, he was a Levite and one family hired him for 10 shekels of silver for a year. But we know from the Bible, what a terrible uh, situation it was. Completely out of the will of God. So servants of God should not be on salary. One man of God says, if you serve God for salary, you will serve the devil for better wages. To, why God brought you here? Some people, particularly, you may be old believer or new believer. I am not born and brought up in the church. But God revealed this blessed truth. I am so grateful to the Lord. This is not a great big church. And I don't say our church, I cannot say it is the best under the sky. I don't say that. But this is where God brought me to. And the truth has been revealed. And God has, I don't say everybody is living this life in the church. But if you want to go at the coming of the Lord, truth is being preached here. If you want to live a holy life, truth is being preached here. And if you go elsewhere, I tell you God will be, your loyalty is divided. Divided loyalty is disloyalty. I don't know whether you, some of you at least might have seen in Ohio Convention, one brother Paul Metananda came. His earlier name was Ashoga Metananda. He was a Buddhist in Australia. And few years ago, he came to salvation and received the Holy Spirit and took baptism in the fellowship. After knowing the truth, he got so excited. And he felt it. When a time came for him to go to Papua New Guinea, that as you know, that is a remote place, uncivilized place. He decided to take up the job, a contract with the government there. You know what was the purpose? He want this truth to go there. And after went to Papua New Guinea, he invited the servants of God from Australia. And they came to his house and stayed there and had meetings there. Now you know Papua New Guinea, one of the very well flourishing church, ch rather churches we have. Few servants of God came out to serve God even last month in the convention. And God richly blessed that work, I mean to say spiritually. And then that man of God had got a burden for Indonesia. He went to Sumatra, Indonesia a few years ago. Now, uh, last month I met uh, Brother Paul uh, Methananda in a convention. He shared with me how many souls are coming? They have meetings on a regular basis. About 30 people are coming. Eight, eight uh, took water baptism just recently. Number of them received the Holy Spirit. He had such a burden for the truth. I am asking you. You may be a believer for so many years. What have you done for the, after knowing this truth? Are you really loyal to the doctrine and the truth God has given to us? And then he told me. Brother Paul told me. He is going to. Uh, he's still doing his uh, government job, but because in his vacation time, perhaps by now he might have gone. He was going to Philippines because his wife is from Philippines. Number of souls uh, through his influence uh, took water baptism and received the Holy Spirit. Even last month at the convention, some Filipino believers also came for the convention in Singapore. Look at that water. Just newly saved child of God after knowing this truth. What he has done for the Lord. I am not praising that child of God. But what I am asking. You may be a believer of so how many years. I am not condemning you. This blessed truth has been brought to your lap. What have you done for this truth? What Have you really fought for it? Stood for it? Or are you living a wishy-washy life? Anywhere I can go. Oh, anything I can hear. No. Dear child of God, holy people, in everything there is a holy way of sleeping. There is a holy way of dressing. There is a holy way of walking. There is a holy way in everything. We read in the Bible, a man of called Elisha. I have no time to mention the verse. You go home and read. And a woman with a husband, 
invited him whenever he passed through that way invited him to come and eat a meal and after eating the meal this is what the woman told the husband this man seems to be a holy man all what he was doing was eating but the way that man was eating the word of god said this must be a holy man i tell you that is the true characteristic of a holy man in everything there is a holiness are you loyal to the truth i am not telling please don't think only out of this fellowship only jesus when jesus comes people will go i don't say that what i want to say god has revealed this truth to you so many people have done so much for the lord what have you done are you living a wishy washy life truth has fallen to the ground it is time to pick up it is time to stand for holiness holiness come to the lord before i close let me take just one verse and please i plead with you this is from the holy spirit you must receive the word and because the word can transform our character and life shall we turn to the book of daniel chapter 2 and i want to tell you the context here that king nebuchadnezzar had a dream and nobody could interpret the dream and then it was told and the wise men all were brought before him and the, the king had also forgotten the dream the king wanted the wise men to tell the dream which he had forgotten and to interpret also the wise men told no please tell the dream then we can interpret and the king told it's gone out of me and the the wise men told sorry we cannot do anything and nebuchadnezzar got very angry and told if you don't tell me the dream and the interpretation there is one law all of you will be cut into pieces and your families and your houses will become a dung hill or toilets and then when that was told then the wise men to gave a wise statement and if you are not really attended to that verse i want you today to attend to that verse that is daniel chapter 2 please read verse 11 and it is a rare thing that the king required and there is none other than other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh this wise men told was very true wise men told nobody who lives in the flesh will be able to interpret to know the dream and to interpret it is impossible but there are some except some saints some gods whose dwelling is not with the flesh praise be to god this wise man told this thing was real wisdom he told no human being who is living in the flesh can inter- to know the dream and the interpretation of that except some saints or gods who do not dwell in the flesh who dwell in the spirit and what happened there was one person who was not dwelling in the flesh who was that daniel he was not dwelling in the flesh he was dwelling in the spirit yes thank god god revealed the dream of nebuchadnezzar and god revealed the interpretation not only that while the king was going to bed what type of worry he worry full thought he had also that also god revealed to him and because of that you know what happened all the wise men who were going to be killed all of them were spared god needs a daniel today this world is going to face a great judgment the king of this world the ruler of this world the devil wanted to kill all wise men and only those who do not dwell in the flesh those who dwell in the spirit only can rescue these wise men who are already condemned by the devil to destroy today god is calling will you be that one daniel 
just one person with God is majority. Today, will you really ask the Lord, Lord, I want victory over my thoughts. I want to be a holy man. I don't want to die like a pig. I want to be a holy man. And as I am closing my verse, may the Lord grant the grace. This sermon will not become a judgment for you and for me. That day, that on that particular day, on the 11th of October, I spoke that morning to you. Why you didn't live a holy life? Why you didn't want to give up your filthiness? Your sinful attitudes and behavior and thoughts and words and deeds and feelings. I could have cleansed you. As I close my words, I tell you. The best time to change our life is the time when God is speaking to change our life. That is the time God gives grace. The best time to live a holy life is the time when God is speaking to us. Be holy. Saints are going to fly away to glory. And it may happen very soon. That day, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And that day, between holy and unholy, a division is going to be made. Shall we all stand up? Today, I encourage you, one man will make a stand. One man with God is majority. One Daniel is enough. I want to live a clean life. If Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. Today, as I close my verse, the happiest people, the most blessed thing to happen in your, in your life is to live a holy life. Oh, let me tell you, in Queen Victoria's words, so many young people that time could go and die for Britain. How many of you are willing to die for Jesus, for this blessed truth? To live a holy life. Your mind will be holy. And God has got a plan for you. Devil got a plan and you may have a plan. God's plan, if that has to be fulfilled from today. Ask the Lord. Lord, I want a clean heart. Like Paul, you will be able to say, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. As I close my words, I request you, if you want to be a Daniel, quickly leave the chairs and come forward and stand. And I want to tell you, this is not simply an altar call. Do you really mean business with God? Don't play, church. Don't play God. If you are serious, Lord, I want to be a Daniel. I want to die for the truth. I want to be a soldier in the holy battle. This is the holy battle. Do you really want to conquer every thought to the obedience of Christ? Come, come. And I tell you, I don't say that this is going to be a very comfortable life. Yes, you will have battle, but God will give you victory. And you must cry out to God, Lord, I want to be. When the King of King is calling, the Lord of Lord is calling, will you go to the battle? Lord, I want to conquer. I want to conquer every evil thought and bring into obedience. Do you want to be a real soldier for Jesus Christ? I ask you young people, does this shake your heart? Does it stir your heart? Come on and let the Lord do a beautiful work today. I want to ask you, cry out to God. Lord, today I want to be enlisted in the army of God. I want to be a holy man. I want to conquer the devil. I want to conquer every evil thought, imaginations and I want to be a holy man. I want to be a happy man. Lord, I want God's plan to be fulfilled in my life. I want to trust. I want to stand for the truth. Hallelujah. Come, cry out to God. Oh, cry out to God. You believe my God is able to make me clean. Oh, angels cry, holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty. Be a soldier for Christ. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Be a fighter for the truth. Be a fighter against all. All the filthiness. Hallelujah. Amen. Fight the good fight. Fight the good fight. Be a hero for Jesus Christ. People in the world, so many are dying for the world. Be willing to die for Jesus. Be willing to die for holiness.
iradı ra, senam dera de gira dera, senam dera. Haleluya, haleluya, haleluya, haleluya, haleluya. İradı ra, senam dera de gira. Oh, hal, see, believe that your God is the conqueror. Haleluya. Our Jesus was never defeated in the battle. He is the captain. Amen. Therefore, you will not be defeated. Join the army of God. Join the army of God. Join the army of God. Join the army of God. Fight a good fight. Iladara. Fight a fight a good fight. Amen. Be a fighter for holiness. Be a fighter for holiness. Come on, open your heart. Open your mouth. Let the new anointing come. Iladara. Shalom dara. Iladara. Shalom dara. Iladara. Shalom dara. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, rather, You all soul, all spirit, and really cry out to God. And you, by faith, you tell the Lord, Lord, I am enlisting myself in the army of holiness. I tell you the last revival and the lasting revival will be the revival of holiness. And God wants you to be part of that revival. Come on, cry out to God. Let the anointing come. Let there be a revival of holiness. Let there be a revival of holiness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Pick it up! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! In Jesus' name! Join the army of God! Join the army of God! Fight a good fight! Don't give up! Don't give up! Don't give up! Don't give up! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! In Jesus' name! In Jesus' name! In Jesus name In Jesus name In Jesus name In Jesus name In Jesus name Do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, fill with thy holiness! Oh, fill with thy holiness! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Devil, get out! Devil, get out of the mind of the people of God today! In Jesus' name! In Jesus name In Jesus name In Jesus name Radha rat kadam dara sada digida dara sanam dara digida dara sanam dara digida dara Radha rat sanam dara digida